Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It is a delight to have you with us here in the sanctuary as well as all of you joining us online. Welcome to worship. I would invite you to take note of the announcements which you can find on the insert in your bulletin. Uh, a couple of thank yous that you'll see there, including for our prayer team as well as Ray Marie's closet and uh, which was this last, uh, which was yesterday, and also for the many people who contributed to the community forum on Tuesday morning. A big thank you to you all uh, for a, a couple of uh, fantastic events. Um, and you'll see a little bit more about what, it, what is uh, coming up as well. Uh, also, a reminder that we continue in our stewardship emphasis, and there is a, an envelope for you as you head out if you're a regular here in worship, uh, pick that up on your way out, uh, and any that aren't picked up, we will put in the mail uh, tomorrow as we uh, conclude this series and this emphasis next Sunday on Consecration Sunday. As we continue in worship, we think back to the last couple weeks, and you can see this reflected on the posters around you, that we are a people rooted in Christ, and out of those roots, given the opportunity to spread our wings and to allow others to do as well to serve so that we might bear good fruit. And it is that fruit we focus on today as we worship together. The call to worship today is on your um, bulletin, not on the screen. If you would stand as you're able. God has called us to freedom through Jesus Christ. People no longer under the law, we may serve one, one another in love. God has given us the spirit that our lives may be fruitful at his service. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Let us pray together. O oh God, who has set us free, through our Lord Jesus Christ, let your spirit work among us and within each of us during this hour, that we may learn to be more like our master, who came not to be served, but to serve. We pray in his victorious name. Amen. And we will be singing, I saw the light, and it will be, the words will be on the screen. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claimed for my own. Then, like the blind man, that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow. Traded the wrong for the 
Amen. Come on. If you're able, I invite you to remain standing for our opening prayer. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for this day and for this opportunity to share together in worship, in song, in praise, in prayer, in word, in presence together as we prepare to serve in the days ahead. Help us to grow in your spirit that we might indeed bear good fruit and to be fruitful in the ministries that we are a part of. Knowing that not everything will always go perfectly or quite the way we imagined, but with your help and your guidance, we know we can make a difference in this world by letting your love, your light, shine through us. All this and so much more we ask to you in the name of your Son, Jesus, through the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. The Hebrew scripture today is from Exodus 23, 10 through 16. And this is where God spoke with Moses on the mountain and gave him his law for the nation of Israel. It's the Sabbath laws. For six years, you were to sow your fields and harvest the crops. But during the seventh year, let the land lie unplowed and unused. Then the poor among your people may get food from it and the wild animals may eat what's left. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. Six days do your work, but on the seventh day do not work, so that your ox and your donkey can rest. And so the slave born in your household and the foreigner living among you may be refreshed. Be careful to do everything I have said to you. Do not invoke the names of other gods. Do not let them be heard on your lips. Three times a year you are to celebrate a festival to me. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. For seven days eat bread made without yeast, as I commanded you. Do this at the appointed time in the month of Aviv, for in that month you came out of Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Celebrate the festival of harvest with the first fruits of the crop you sow in your field. Celebrate the festival of ingathering at the end of the year, when you gather in your crops from the field.
Invite our children to come forward. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Excellent. So brought with me an apple. How many seeds do you think are in this apple? What would you guess? Eight. Eight. I've not looked ahead of time, so we're going to see, but I did cut it. I cut this ahead of time. Let's see. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Where are all the seeds? Don't They're that? probably gone because they grew and the, the seeds all that is the apple. Maybe they <laughs> maybe they fell out on the way up. So anyway, there were supposed to be seeds there. That is not really a trick. No seeds. There should be <laughs> seeds. Um, if I had a seed here, which I was expecting to show you, how many, how many apples do you think would come out of that seed? Um, eight. Eight. <laughs> it's, it's hard to know, right? But if that seed turned into a tree, and that tree was full of apples, and then it had a tree full of apples every year, That'd be a lot of apples, right? Yeah. It'd be really hard to count, just from that one little seed. Isn't that amazing? And if you actually had a seed, it'd be even more amazing. Here, if I had a seed. Um, do you ever think that you might be like a seed, an apple seed? Um, no. No? So I'm not saying you are a seed, because one, you're bigger than a seed, right? But you could be pretty sweet right? Like an apple. You could, when you're kind to somebody, or you smile at somebody, or you're generous and give something to somebody, you can be like the seed that grew into a tree and had a lot of fruit on it. Right? You can really, you can do a lot just as one person. And that's what we're thinking about today and our scriptures remind us today of how a Christian is fruitful, how we can be, we can seem like something or someone really small, like a seed, but we can also produce a lot of fruit, like this apple or whatever your favorite fruit might be. 
So how might you how might you show that love of God this week, do you think? What's something you could do? Or something you might do? Don't know. Don't know. You might be kind to a friend. You might give your parents a hug. You might you might help somebody who's having a bad day. There's all kinds of different ways you could be someone making really good fruit. So, and when you do that, think about the gift God gave you this week when you do those things to, to be able to do that for other people. All right, shall we have a word of prayer? Can I say sure. Uh, my brother is sick. Oh. Can you take him to church? Shall we pray for, for, uh, for Mason as well? Okay. Well, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that you love all of us, and we say a special prayer right now for Mason, and we pray that he will heal quickly and be his normal self uh, as soon as possible, but help him to know that you are there with him. We pray for Tommy and for all of us that we can, as, as sometimes insignificant as we might think we are, realize how much fruit we can make in this world by exhibiting the joy and the love and the kindness and the patience among other things that you encourage us to do as a way of showing what faith is like. We thank you for all this and so much more and we pray it in your name. Amen. I love the German, children's sermon. It fills my heart. Today's uh, epistle lesson is um, Colossians 1, 1 through 14, so a little longer than you may have anticipated. And, sorry. and this is a letter that Paul wrote to the Colossians while he was in prison. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. To the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love you have for all the saints the faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you should have already heard about in the word, word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace and all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ and our, on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we may pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And the gospel lesson, please stand as you're able, is from Luke 6, 43 through 45, and I'm reading from the New International Version. 
So this is Jesus' call to self-examination. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our next song, please stay um, standing for our next song, For the Fruit of All Creation. And it's in your United Methodist Hymnal, page 97, and on the screen. Please be seated. This morning, continuing in the series on uh, the stewardship emphasis, began two weeks ago with uh, rooted, or roots, rooted in Christ. Last week with wings, uh, or wings to serve, and this week, fruit, uh, or what it is that comes from those roots and those wings. First, though, would you please pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I've mentioned before how growing up I was, this time of year and through the growing season, always within sight and always uh, very present in our family were gardens, uh, large gardens. Uh, my mom's garden, it's hard to tell, you know, comparatively because they're different shapes, but uh, would have covered ground larger than this room. Um, my grandmother had a couple of gardens and a couple, well, both my grandmothers and my maternal grandmother had a couple of gardens, um, one on each end of, the, of, the, of their main property. Um, and they were always doing something in the garden. There was always rows to hoe for, uh, to, for weeds. There was always something that was in season that needed to be picked. There was always uh, pruning or uh, tilling or planting or uh, tearing, out, uh, tearing out something that was maybe growing early on so that the pumpkin vines or the squash vines could have a little more space there was always something to do. And it was amazing. I didn't really realize at the time. I thought 
as maybe children are want to do sometimes, that what I had was what everybody had. And I couldn't understand why you would need to go to a grocery store because you had everything you needed right there. You had tomatoes and pumpkins and radishes and lettuce and carrots and celery and peppers and you had strawberries, raspberries, grapes. Couldn't quite ever find the banana, but but, um, but there's a lot, a lot there to really enjoy. It's always amazing how much then we used, lived off that all through the, through the winter season. I, I think it was, as I recall, it was not unusual for mom to say can a hundred quart of applesauce and I can't remember how many boxes of, of corn and uh, beans and other things that she would freeze and we would use, use those all, all through the winter and into the spring until the, next, until the next year's crop was ready. Uh, but in any given season, and some of you I've heard talk about these things uh, this year as, as most years, for certain plants it are really doing well and others maybe not so much. Or we sometimes might say it's been a really good season for peaches. Thank you. Uh, but on the other hand, it's been a really bad season for corn <laughs> and probably a few other um, a few other things too even even I'm sure some variation between different uh, bet- between different places and sometimes whether it's the peaches that do well or the corn that maybe hasn't done so well it it can be either in spite of our efforts or despite our best efforts it's not always not always dependent on the inputs that go in But more often than not, what comes out of a garden has a lot to do with the person uh, tending the garden. Um, Sometimes we don't know what we don't know as far as a good soil or a good good place for a garden, for example. Um, But more often than not, a good garden has a good gardener, um, or at least a very attentive gardener, um, tending to it. Jesus used these images of, of gardens, of farms, of growing things because it was something very common to the people that would have been listening. And it's relatively common here, but certainly not everybody has that experience of growing things. But, and because of this, though, because of this common experience of, of people growing things, and of course, there were no Hannafords, and there were no Walmarts, and there were no Shaws, and no... Uh, market baskets to go to, they really depended on what they could grow or maybe what their neighbor could grow uh, to live. There was no other place to go. And so you could imagine they could be very, uh, they were very tuned to this idea of good fruit and bad fruit. Uh, A poor harvest could spell trouble for the existence of your family or yourselves or put some extra strain on your neighbors. Um, and if, uh, as you may have recalled from your reading of, of a history, famines were uh, oftentimes that caused great distress in, in a given place. Our gospel lesson today talks about uh, fruit uh, in terms of not whether there's fruit, but what kind of fruit there is. And talks about a bad tree producing bad fruit and a good tree producing good fruit. And Jesus wasn't going around and saying, now that, that apple tree is really naughty. <laughs> so therefore, the, you know, it wasn't like that. Or that, that, that grapevine there is a really good grape and it's just going to be really nice to you. It, it wasn't like that. It was a comparison to, to us. What are we like? Um, so you can pick your favorite fruit, if you will, if you want, uh, and imagine that. But, but imagine your life like perhaps what Jesus is referring to in the scripture. And whether you're a tree or a vine or a shrub or a bush or a singular plant uh, coming from the ground, the question he wants to ask is, what kind of fruit do you produce with your life? 
What kind of evidence is there in your life that shows your faith? And Jesus doesn't mean that he's going to be sitting someday at the pearly gates and going, okay, you've got 30 apples and you have 50 bananas, so the banana person, you're better. It's, that's not, it's not about quantity. It's more like quality. You know, if, any, if you've ever, any of you have ever cut an apple open and found a worm, you're probably going to think, hmm, I don't think I'm going to eat this one. And sometimes, some years, there's just a whole lot of wormy apples, or um, the fruit just doesn't turn out right. Sometimes there's a blight or whatever. It's more about the quality of the, of the apple, or whatever the fruit is. And sometimes it can look great on the outside, maybe not so great on the, on the inside. These are the kinds of things Jesus was pointing people to. Whatever people can see on the outside, what does it look on the inside of you? How is it with you and God? How is it with you and your neighbor? How is it with you and maybe even your enemy who we like to keep off at an arm's length. How does your faith show up in your relationships? What kind of fruit does that produce? And, not what, and it's not always what people can see, but what, what is it that we know God can see on the inside? What is it really looking like? The letter to uh, Colossians reminds us that, that in every work, in every good work, we want to produce good fruit. And what does that fruit look like? If you would just pick up your, uh, or pull out your bulletin again. The second line in the call to worship, the second line under uh, people there, where it says the fruit of the Spirit, let's, uh, let's say that together just to remind ourselves. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now that can seem like a really tall order. There's some days when any one of us doesn't feel particularly patient, or our kindness is being really stretched, or we feel like maybe we're losing a little bit of control over circumstances in our life for those around us, or we're not feeling all that loving, or very joyful. It's not, so it's not to say that, that uh, producing good fruit and living with these qualities is a simple matter. Just like a good gardener, it takes a lot of tending. For many of you, it takes, it, it's it gonna be not exactly the same for every person. Some of you really find it easier to get into that place through your prayer life. Some of you find that your small groups or your studies really help you stay grounded in, and focused on where you need to be. For some of you, it's, it's music, it's worship itself, it's when you serve other people. Those kinds of activities and disciplines and practices that keep you connected to God, both realistic and connected to each other, and focused on what God is doing, focused ahead on what God is doing and is asking us uh, to do. When we focus on the fruit of our life, we're not just looking back in the barn to see what we've collected and, and to be satisfied with that, because that has its purpose. We're looking ahead also in what kind of fruit we are to make or plan to make next. So how do we do that? Um, so a couple disciplines that are mentioned specifically today, one of them is about uh, time. In the Old Testament lesson, we were reminded that for every six days of work, there was one day of, of rest. Have you ever noticed if you, this probably doesn't apply to everybody, but it certainly applies to me, if you have a, um, a long week, or maybe even a long day, and you just work straight through, you plow through lunch, kind of miss it and you plow through any through the afternoon and maybe even into the evening that as the day wears on you're just not as productive as you were when the day began 
you're still working, but you're not getting as much done. But how sometimes, you know, you can take, you take a good lunch, um, a well-timed break, and you come back, and even with less time, actually, in activity, you can actually get more done. All those years ago, there was this recognition that rest, appropriate rest, was important. But also, there's a sense of generosity. So right after that piece about the Sabbath is the sense of generosity in that in whatever we produce, we give what is the scripture calls the first fruits. It's not a phrase we use a lot of, first fruits, but it was the biblical way of saying you give off the top, like, like the cream that rises to the top. You give the top of what you've made for your tithe. Uh, scripture talks about a tithe as 10%. But you, give, you give not from what is left over, or you give not from if there's something left over. You start with the best of what you had. So if you raised cattle, you gave the best calf. If you raised crops, you gave the best grain. If you made something with your hands, you gave the best of what you made. Uh, not what was left over, or if there was left over. You gave the best. And usually the best was the first, uh, not always, but very often, the first of what you made. But the best of what you made. You make space for God and for your own health. You give the best of what you have to God. And you focus on those those qualities, knowing that we're all, to some degree, in process towards those. And some of those are easier than others. One person might really be good at patience. Somebody else might be really good at joy. Somebody else might be really talented at self-control. And that may not be your thing, quite, or you have to really work hard at that part. But that's what we're aiming for. That's what the fruit of the Spirit and the fruit of our faith looks like. And that when we have those qualities, then what, what comes out of those can really make an enormous difference. Two things I saw just this week. One was yesterday, I mentioned it a, a moment ago, was the, the, uh, the coat giveaway. And uh, both from what I saw and from, from those who were there all day had uh, related how many people came and uh, filled a couple of bags of coats or hats, mittens, gloves. There's kind of a variety of things. And um, in many cases, because they could not, would not have been able to afford those otherwise. And out of, out of what we had gathered from the community, they were able to do something they could not have done. That was... Um, in some ways, almost easy to do. A lot of, uh, and by that I mean, a lot of us had coats we no longer used. But a lot harder, in some ways, was Tuesday as we welcomed leaders from from the community, and we we really put ourselves uh, uh, out there to welcome people, to host them, and to engage. Uh, sometimes with questions. Uh, that we didn't really know where they were, where those conversations were going to go about the strengths and the weaknesses of the community, and what could we begin to do to address some of those needs. But it was the collective fruits of our church community that made it possible to do, um, that that engaged people and has, um, uh, after that first gathering of brought us to a point where people want to come back or gather again to continue those conversations. Uh, it's the beginning of what I hope will be something very fruitful, uh, even as we have seen some wonderful uh, early results. So whether you're thinking today about your personal stewardship, how you use your time and your talent and your treasures for God's work, in the world, whether you're thinking of the church, and it could be this congregation or the wider church's witness in the world and how you connect with the wider Christian community, 
or whether you're thinking of perhaps how you function day to day in your homes, in your workplaces, in your schools, wherever you are, how is it that your life shows the fruit of God? How is it that your actions testify to God's work in your life? And where you see those places, please celebrate those. Be excited about those. And where you see opportunities for growth, like don't beat yourself up. Uh, because we all have places that, that could use improvement. But see the opportunity to grow this year. Make, make that your goal. Here's an area that I would like to be more fruitful. Here's a place that I would like to have a few less worms in my fruit or a few less bad spots in what I offer or a few less uh, rough places that I know I could do something about. I know I have those. I'm sure we all have those. When we focus on those and uh, can produce better fruit in response this does not help us be in any better standing with God, but in response to God's goodness, the fruit we produce in the community has an even wider impact, sometimes even far beyond what we can imagine. I'm always ama amazed when a teacher, or, I or when I hear a story of a teacher where a student comes back five, 15, sometimes 25 years later, long after they have gone through the school and gone on to some other part of their life, coming back and saying to their teacher, thank you for when you taught me this lesson or for this topic or for this class because it really impacted my life and I think about it all the time or I, I'm very grateful for what you have done. Sometimes we don't even know or aren't even aware of that kind of impact that our fruitfulness provides but we offer freely because God has done that for us, not counting the cost or the benefit, but simply doing, orienting ourselves in the direction God would point us. Offer good fruit, and the love of God will be fruitful in ways beyond even what we can imagine. For that opportunity, let's truly say, thanks be to God. Amen. We have a special stewardship moment, and Bev, did you want to say anything about um, Jeremiah's video before before we show it. Good morning, everyone. Um, Stacy and I had an opportunity to visit with Jeremiah, who is the 42-year-old man that had a stroke while driving home from work. And um, he just enjoys the, all the things that we've been doing as a church for him. I have a new address that I'll put up on the church site, but um, just keep in mind that he, I think, was he about eight weeks post-stroke when we took this? Yeah, so some of his um, verbalization is a little tough, but I think you'll see his spirit shining through. Hello, thank you for your prayers and your cards and the teddy bear. He stays right here with me. Mm -hmm. He allows me to sleep at night. I'm used to my fuzzy butt laying here. That's good. That's good. My little ginger pop. Yep. I go to have my brain put back on. Well, that'll be great, honey. Well, yeah, um, I can't lose too much more because I don't know how much I got left. No. There have been days that uh, I haven't had the energy to get out of this bed and. All of a sudden, I just say, screw it, and pick my leg up and throw it over the edge, and hopefully I don't fall off. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to see if I could set up some way I could call the, the church on a Sunday and have, like, a video call with you all, you know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. 
I thought about it this Sunday, but it was just a little late, and it was. I was kind of in an off, off move, off day. I got one of my god fearing bears right here. Yes. <laughs> he's a bed hog at sometimes, and at yeah. times, he's my pillow. He comes up here and he goes just like this. He's a good hugger. He kicks me in the head when he wants to. He's a very good hugger. Oh yeah. We'll do that. We love you, Jeremiah. Love you all too. Thank you for the prayers and the wishes, and thank you for the cards. I got all my and I will, when I can get there, I will make a collage of them. Hello. Thank you for your prayers and your cards and the teddy bear. He stays right here with me. He allows me to sleep at night. I'm used to my fuzzy butt laying. Jeremiah is one of those examples of how seemingly simple actions like cards and prayers really do make a big difference. Thank you for your fruitfulness uh, in this world. So we are at the time of uh, prayer. If you have a uh, joy or a concern that you would like to share, if you would just... Uh, Reverend Tim, I have two. Yes. Um, Miss Marie, who's downstairs, has requested prayers for a friend of hers, Joe, who's having a hip replacement surgery tomorrow. And also, I received a text message from Justine Cantone this morning. Uh, Peg Young has COVID, so she's requested that we lift Peg up in prayer. So for Peg and for Joe. I, I have just wonderful, wonderful news this morning. Marion Green, who's behind me and probably wants to hit me in the head, got her test results back, and praise God, they were all good. She's going to be having a little treatment, but not any of the stuff we thought she was going to have to go through. So praise God for that. Oh. <laughs> we are excited for you, Marion, but we will continue our prayers nonetheless. And I'm really happy that my niece Jody's here with, uh, with us today. Welcome again. So we have a church member here. I don't see him. Where is he? Who's having surgery tomorrow morning, going in at 8.30. Charlie, where'd you go? Oh, there he is. He's running the screen. Charlie's having surgery tomorrow. So I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind that I just told everybody. But I think we need to keep you in prayer tomorrow. We certainly will. I have prayers for my friend Marjorie who lost her life to cancer. Oh. And I'd like prayers for her family and also for the family of a friend of mine in Florida who passed away at the end of August for his family. So for your friend in Florida and also for Marjorie and family. Yeah. Reverend Tim, I uh, ask for prayers for Kate's sister, Marilee, who begins four rounds of chemotherapy tomorrow, followed by uh, surgery and radiation. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Tim mentioned the Neighbors Helping Neighbors community forum that we had this past week. And one of the individuals at my table represents Tri-County CAP and she left with me a petition warrant article signature, which commonly annually appears on the town warrant for Moltenboro. I'll be downstairs, and if anyone who is a resident of Moltenboro would like to sign this, I encourage them to do so. And I wanted to add that that community forum is really a, a cause for celebration. It was just a wonderful event. And bless you guys for bringing it together. Um, I was going to mention Charlie, uh, <laughs> and, but uh, yes, it will be a shoulder replacement tomorrow morning. Pray for him. He hates to ask for help. Um, and also, please, prayers for Charlie's cousin, Danny, who we've mentioned a few times, but he's back in the hospital. He is not doing well, and he's appreciative of prayers. Certainly keep Danny in our prayers, and, and your shoulder, Charlie, for sure. Yes. We have a joy. We have our friends Celia and Graham Ellison from Cornwall, England with us for two weeks. And we're just thrilled. We're thankful for that. Welcome in. We're excited you're here. Also, I'd like to have people uh, be aware and, and pray.
pray for friends and family of uh, Dave Chase, who died this week. Uh, many of you knew him, and he's had a struggle for what, quite a while. It's over now. Davis was a huge part of this church and this community. And it fills my heart with joy to see her name in a program and to hear us talk about her. And as we all know, when you say their name, they are never gone. Mm -hmm. She will never be gone from my heart. And I just absolutely thank you, Bev, for honoring her with this closet um, program yesterday. And for those of us who knew and loved Ray Marie, her closet was always bulging. <laughs> Thank you, Bev. Good morning, church family. I have a joy, a great joy. My troubled daughter reached out, and we will be spending the day together the 29th, which will be this Sunday coming. So it, I haven't seen her for over a year. We spoke, but very little. So please pray that it goes well and we reconcile and things go well and she's back with the family. Thank you. We'll continue to pray for your family and your daughter. My name is Dorothy Caswell. I don't know all of you, but I come back every summer, and I just want to thank you for welcoming me. Thank you, Jim. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I continue to keep uh, Ken Young uh, in prayer. He's Ken is really uh, uh, he's discouraged. Um, just needs prayer at this time. Oh, uh, still at Concord. Concord Hospital. Any others? If not, then let us return to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we are sometimes overwhelmed by the events of our lives and those that we know and the events of the world. And yet in your goodness and in your, in the vast reach of your grace, we are beyond words that you can hear each one of our requests, feel each one of us and what we're feeling today and hold that in the palms of your hands surrounding us with the very love that you came to this world in the form of your son Jesus and gave it all that we could have so so very much sometimes this journey of life confounds us and perplexes us and yet we know that such high joy and, uh, and uh, wonder and excitement can be part of it as well. And we've discovered that you are so much a part of this world, but yet we often do not see you at work, whether we are not looking for you or are distracted by other forces and factors, um, or we ourselves sometimes get discouraged, even like the disciples. But as you do with us, you did with them. Always there, always teaching, always redirecting, always pointing them to, as you do us, to something larger 
to the very work of grace in this world, as you did when you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As God is so generous to us, we return back to God what God has given us as we receive our morning tithes and offerings. Just as wisdom works with willing hands and provides for those in need, may these gifts be used to nurture and uplift our community. Inspire us to follow your teachings of kindness and generosity. Transform our contributions into acts of love and justice 
spreading your light into the world. May we always give credit to your divine wisdom and grace. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may remain standing for the closing hymn on the screen or in the red hymnal on page 530, Are Ye Able? If you're visiting with us, we invite you to join us for fellowship and refreshments in the fellowship hall immediately following worship. There's also still coats, hats, gloves, boots, and you're welcome to take a look and see if there's something that'll work for you. Um, and don't forget your letter on the way out. And wherever you go the rest of this day and the rest of this week, go to bear much fruit, but don't feel that you need to do it alone for you have many tenders, garden tenders with you. And most especially, we have the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen. And don't forget that the fruit of the Spirit will be over at Tufton Borough on this coming Wednesday, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, with Dan Shaw and his music ministry, traditional music and good old gospel music. So I hope you'll take the time to be there and support.
the Tufton Borough Church. Thank you. 